let's give Andy a welcome. Give the hand out. Andy's been a good friend. He, he's a guy who wants to serve. He's often here very early in the morning to set up for lunch club uh, tables, doing things. He'll do pretty much anything. If there's anything that needs to go to tip, Andy's the guy. Now, I love going to tip, but Andy fights me on it all the time. This is a guy who's got, who was brought up in, um, which, where was it again? Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad and Tobago. Are you going to tell us about that? Maybe. Okay, let me tell him about it. So Andy was brought up, his dad was a missionary in Trinidad and Tobago, not a bad place to go, it seems. You know, if you're going to pray for anywhere to go. But it was tough, it was hard, it was hard work, but it shaped him as a man, actually he's got a lot to offer. So let's give Andy a really warm welcome as he brings what God's put in his heart. Yes, um... My parents were missionaries uh, to Trinidad and Tobago. We lived in the island of Tobago, and I had the privilege, and I do say that as a, a privilege, to grow up in, um, in the West Indies. The men and women who I um, grew up with in the church um, had a part of, even though my mother led me to the Lord out there in my bedroom, those guys had a lot to do with me coming to know the Lord. Um, and I praise God for them. We went back for my 50th birthday. It's the only time I've been back. And they were all still there. They all remembered me. Wonderful memories. Um, and the thing is, when you go back, you, you are the visiting speaker. You don't have a choice. So, And then you go to the open air and... Brother Andrew will preach to you this evening. So it was great in that way as well because you didn't get away with anything. You, you had to give an account of... Um... So this morning, um, I would like in a few minutes to... I want to encourage you, but there's also a bit of a warning at the end and I think if we, if we look at the Bible, if this is our faith, then you have to take it from the beginning to the very end. That's the whole story. And Dennis has looked at us being involved, men, men of God, in the word that we, we read about, you got involved with God or God involved them in, in building his church or in the Old Testament, in, in um, the life of Israel. So, so we're going to look at endurance and we're going to look at a bit of the race and then the end of the race. And this is a question to you, and you can answer it if you want to. Um, I, I like tennis a little bit, or Dave likes football. But when Liverpool started out at the beginning of the season, um, what was their goal? To win the league. So to come second or third, even though we're British, you see, when you're British, you take part, don't you? And that's, that's great. We take part. Um, Sue and I were in America a few years ago when the Olympics was on, and you wouldn't think any other country in the world was at the Olympics apart from the Americans because they told you who came first and who came third. But the third guy was a bit, you know... Um, they didn't tell you who came second... A guy from Peru got the silver. I didn't tell you any of that. It was just the Americans came first and third. But yes, when we, when we start out on a race, there's, there's an end to the race. So depending on sort of, you know, when you were at school and you did the marathon, there wasn't much of a reward at the end of it, apart from well done, you know, and that was it. But, 
you know, if you're Djokovic and you start playing tennis in the Australian Open, you want to pick up the trophy at the end of it. Yeah? You want to win the trophy. You're not happy getting knocked out at quarterfinals or semifinals. He wants to win the trophy. And as Christians, and my other point right at the beginning is, if, if you're not a Christian, and Dave has already spoken about this, if you're not a Christian, then please don't leave this morning without coming forward and, and let us pray with you because you can't start the race unless you're in the race. So I'd like to encourage anybody who isn't, you know, doesn't love the Lord to come forward and join the race. So endurance is, is about the ability to endure to the end. So we, so we start the race and we keep going. If we, if we look at Israel through Abraham, God said, leave. You know, he said, leave and follow, you know, just. And so you see Israel's journey and God, they make a mess of it, don't they? And don't we make a mess of things? Yeah, of course we do. We, none of us, none of us were worthy this morning to come, but through Jesus, God sees us through Jesus as worthy. And so if I can just read um, the 23rd Psalm to you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, and your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. It's not just topped a little bit. Surely goodness and mercy, I've added my own version to that, surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Those two little words at the end, forever. Forever. Talking about journeys, um, I'll just, read, I'll just read Timothy to you. Uh, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Endurance. Um, I came across, um, and I don't, don't know if any of you are history buffs, but you probably know more about this than me, but there's a guy called... Sir Ernest Shackleton. Anybody heard of Ernie? Yes. And Ernest Shackleton, um, decided one day to go to the Antarctic to do a land journey that had never, ever been done before. Now, I'll read you. Dennis already read us to us about what Paul had... I have to get a new rostrum. Um, what Paul went through. Shackleton in 1914. So this was around the time of the war, and I think it has something to do with why so many men wanted to go on this ship with him, because they were thinking, I'll either go to war and get shot, or I'll take my chances with Shackleton freezing to death, um, and maybe I might get home. So Shackleton put, um, and in fact, even though I've, I read this, there's no, no actual proof that this, they couldn't find this, but they surmise that this is what happened. 
So he writes in the paper, jobs needed, okay? And this is the job description. It's a hazardous journey, small wages, bitterly cold, long months of complete darkness, constant danger, safe return, very doubtful. Honor and recognition in the case of success. So they're, they're not even going to get a trophy, but they'll go down in the annals of history. So Shackleton had hundreds of men apply for this job, and he picked his team. And I, I could spend a long time talking about this, but time doesn't permit. But they didn't actually complete what they were supposed to have completed. Their ship got into the ice, and the ice just squeezed it, crushed it. They then went on foot. They carried their boat, boats, and then Shackleton and four other men did an 800-mile journey to somewhere where they could get um, people to come and get the other men. Now, they've actually written a management book. If anybody wants to borrow it off me, they can do. Um, they wrote a management book on all the things that come out of this story because Shackleton, not one single man died in that expedition. There was a second boat that is involved somewhere. Three men died on that ship, but on Shackleton's boat, not one single man died. He, at times, gave his own food to men who were sick so that they could get better, so they could be strengthened and heal. And, and it's a very, very interesting um, management. It wouldn't go down in 99.9% .9 of management uh, meetings today because they don't do things like that. So... Uh, I throw that in as, as the natural, uh, an example of a natural um, story of, of endurance. Men that, yeah, they got home and maybe they had a couple of fingers missing or a couple of toes, but they all lived. And Shackleton... Um, Shackleton was a great man. So if we, if we move on, endurance, as, as Dennis said, is, is about you know, not giving up, not believing God. And I had a wonderful experience in the, in the Caribbean when I, when I got baptized. Uh, my mum led me to the Lord and eventually I got baptized. And there were probably about 250 West, Indies, West Indian brothers and sisters in this church that my, my dad had built. I, I worked with him as a boy. We used to go down into dry rivers and get boulders out and gravel. And a friend of ours had a beach. We used to go and get the sand off the beach. We built this beautiful church, had its own baptistry. And so one day, I get baptized. And very emotional for me and my dad. You know, it's Dave knows when you baptize your own children, it's a wonderful uh, experience. And so I go down into the water. My dad asks me whether I love the Lord and deny Satan and all his works and that and in I go and as I come out of the water Dennis will probably and Pat probably know this song um, they start singing I have decided to follow Jesus anybody know that song? wow so I'm not the only old one here <laughs> but it's it's the second part of the song that really to me is so important 
I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. Say the next words. No turning back. No turning back. And then another verse is, Oh, take the whole world, but give me Jesus. Um, Though no one go with me, still I will follow. No turning back. No turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me. What happened to, to Lot's wife when Abraham went down to save Lot and bring him with him? Lot's wife, she was still in Sodom and Gomorrah and she turned into a pillar of salt. Though none go with me, still I would follow. The Bible talks about a broad road and a narrow road. We're walking, we're walking the narrow road. And it's not easy to walk a narrow road. No turning back, no turning back. And for many of us here, probably all of us in our experience, we've had times when we've, you know, come up against something and you sort of think, I just can't do this anymore, you know, but you suddenly realize that Jesus, suddenly the trophy suddenly comes into, into view. Because we are on a journey. We're, we're all on a journey. This life that we're living now is a journey. We're journeying along this road. And one day, the, one of the songs that um, Vernon sang, um, we we stand transfixed on Jesus' face. You know, we'll cast our crowns before him. We'll be in the presence of mighty God. And that's, that's the journey. We're, we're walking along this road. Um, and there is, there is a trophy at the end of it. There is, it's, worth, it's worth the journey, folks. <laughs> That's why we're here. That's why we love the Lord. We're on a journey, and one day, um, but there's so much I'd like to say. But Dave's not going to let me say it. So, In the psalm that we read, and if if we read our Bibles from from the beginning to the end, the the end of our Christian walk with God, not very pleasant, really, if we're honest. There are things that go on in Revelation that that are pretty tough. And unless we endure, you know, unless we endure the journey, because sometimes we, we tend to sort of, we love the gentle Jesus meek and mild. We tell those stories to our children. We have Jesus coming, living in the manger, you know, coming in the manger, and we love Christmas. And Easter's very sad, but then up from the grave he arose, and we love that. And we love all the, but there is an end that we have got to endure, that we've got to travel to and through, and then we'll come out the other side. Because, so the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That's great. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. That's great. We have a God who cares for us. He loves us. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. 
But yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And our, endure, our endurance is not one of, you know, the stiff upper lip, you know, the old British thing, you know, yeah, we'll stick in there. It's, it's, it's not about that. The world does that, and some of them do it very well. But our life of enduring is, is through our relationship with, with our Savior, through our relationship with our God, through standing on that solid rock, feasting upon his word, a relationship with him in prayer and worship. Those are the things that you know, the old, the picture of walking through the desert and there's only one set of footprints in the sand. He carries us at times when we, we can't walk. But you prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. Surely goodness and love will follow me. And God is a good father. You know, he, he gives good gifts to us. He wants the best for us. And there's a verse that says he won't allow us to go through anything that we can't actually manage to get through because we don't get through it in our strength. We get through it in his strength. He who has done, and I'll do the, I'll read a little reading to you and this is in honor of my mother I say honor she's still alive I tell you what if my mum gets to a hundred um, I don't think my sister could cope with it but <laughs> we at last year's birthday so my mum's 92 at last year's birthday, we were all sitting around, and we blew the candles out, and everybody sang happy birthday. And then my mum went, wouldn't it be good to have another one? And my sister, quite spontaneously, because she's been looking after her for nearly two years now, and I, some of you know I disappear every now and then and go down and see her. And my sister suddenly blurted out, she went, I hope not. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't take another year. <laughs> Uh, she didn't really mean it, but, but I'll leave you with this. In Philippians 1, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus. And this morning at communion, I, I felt there were one or two who were being robbed of the ability to be able to come and take communion because of they didn't feel worthy or didn't feel... And you know, none of us, if it wasn't for the work of the cross, for the work of redemption, the work of God in our lives, and how God sees us through Christ, None of us, you know, are worthy. But we must be confident of this very thing, that he started a work in you, and he's going to bring that work to completion in each one of us who... And if you want prayer, you know, if you want to come out and prayer just to say, Father, just give me that confidence to really just take hold of you each day, every moment of the day, that I can walk that race, that I can carry on on the journey. And, you know, with Paul, it said, I've, I've run the race, and I've well done, thou good and faithful servant, you know? Um, and so, yes, so please don't lose anything of what Dennis said to us earlier but maybe the two married together um, and that we've encouraged you this morning.
Amen. Well, so we're certainly encouraged, aren't we? Challenged, encouraged, strengthened by two men who have gone ahead of us, seen a lot, set an example for us to follow, following their saviour. So let's stand, we're going to worship together. With all, the, all the band are still in the youth group, that's good, isn't it? <laughs> we can worship without the band. We can worship just with Vernon. A chance coming. Are you going to come and sing? Yes. But let me just um, put this down. Perhaps you're going through a tough time. And you feel like God's called you to something. Sometimes it's just simply being a mum or a dad. And that's really tough. But perhaps you need that God to help you push through. We set out to win. We set out to be the best parents that we want to be. We set out to be the best that we want to be, as Dennis said. We set out to complete like Ernest Shackleton. But sometimes we just have to keep pressing on and say, actually, maybe it's not perfect, but I'm not going to give up. And I think there's some of you, as both Dennis and Andy have said, that you feel like giving up. I think this is a message from God to us today not to give up to keep pressing on to keep asking God that he will finish the work that he started so as we sing as we worship if you feel there's something specific that you want prayer for then please come forward or ask the person that you're next to but don't leave it don't go back home with those feelings And if you're not a Christian, you feel actually God's calling me to take that step of faith today, then again, take that step. Ask someone, today today I think it's my day. I need to get right with God. And you can do that where you are. You can do it uh, with someone else. Just don't leave it. Amen. Thanks for listening. For more information about Jubilee Church Wirral, please go to jubileechurchwirral.org.uk. Jubilee Church Wirral, a growing church, reaching out, seeing lives changed.